Welcome back to the PLC eUniversity. This is going to be a presentation on Connected Components Workbench. These are the second editions of this manual, not yet on the website, but will be shortly. A little reorganization and some additional materials. So in these two manuals, we've included some cues at certain parts in the lab projects for you to go to this manual, which has projects for Panel View 800 and the PowerFlex 525 and these panel view and PowerFlex projects integrate with some of the projects in part one and part two of the basic manuals. Now you can use part one and part two without this new manual. You can use the new manual without part one and two. You're a little bit more on your own if you don't use part one and two. I give you enough logic in the red and black manual there that you can do the panel view in the PowerFlex 525 projects. Specifically today, we want to talk about using the Micro 800 simulator to do emulations. A simulator is a device that simulates. But on its own, it doesn't emulate. Emulate is where it actually provides all the functions. You may remember that there is a Emulate 500, and that was a simulator for MicroLogix. This is going to be the simulator for the Micro 800 that you can use in Connected Components Workbench, version 12 or later. This is not a start from scratch video. We're assuming that you already know how to use Connected Components Workbench that you already know how to create a project, that you already know how to select a processor, and that you already know how to create program files, add variables, both global and local, and that you already know how to work with a real hardware controller. This is just going to be on the simulator. I'm going to start with Connected Components Workbench. This is the developer edition, version 12. Now the simulator, you can use it in the standard edition. The difference is in the standard edition, it'll run for 10 minutes. In the developer's edition, which is about $500, it'll run for a full day. So we're going to create a project because that project has to be based on a simulator. File, new, and we'll just call it M850 underscore sim for simulator. I'll put a couple zeros after it in case I want to do another one. And after it wakes up, it's going to come up with this pop-up, we're going to pick a controller. There's only one simulator that you can use, and it's a Micro 850 LC50-48QWB-SIM. And this is looks just like a controller to the software. The difference is that it's a data structure that also includes some method. If you picked an actual 48QWB, it would be missing some of the elements that allows us to simulate a controller. So we select it, select it. Notice it's version 12. It won't be in any of the earlier versions anyway. Add to project. And there it is. Now that's not the that's not the simulator. This is just an image of a 48 QWB. So we still have a ways to go here. Probably the most important thing is Ethernet. We're not going to assign it an Ethernet address and subnet mask in the typical location because this is not the simulator. We will assign that to the simulator once we have started the simulation and powered it up. At this point, I'm going to go up to this little toolbar right here, Start Micro 800 Simulator, Power On Micro 800 Simulator. This will be your fault status, and this will be Synchronize the Module Configuration. Now this is very important if you are actually doing a simulation and it is relevant what I.O. you have. This data structure, virtual data structure, data structure of a, a 48 QWB has 28 inputs and 20 outputs, a total of 48 I.O. But it's all discrete or digital I.O. If you need analog or you need some other functions, you're going to have to add those as plug-in modules. You have to go down here to plug-in modules. Plug-in modules, these five right here, one, two, three, four, five, and then expansion modules would be out here, one, two, three, four. So at this point, you would have to add whatever I.O. modules you have. Now in our case, because I'm showing you how to do this simulator, primarily so when you use the lab project books that we have, that you will be all ready to fly. We're not going to use any extra I.O. We're going to use it straight out of the box of 48. QWB. At this point, I can click on Run, and up pops the simulator. I'm going to pull it on screen here. Now, this is 
the simulator. It's in memory, but we're not really connected and it's not turned on. See this power button right here or up here? It, until you turn it on, this would be like a controller out there outside of your computer, a real hardware one out on the shop floor, and you've connected a cable, but it's not turned on. In that case, it doesn't exist. Not to your software, it doesn't. I mean, you may lay eyes on it, but it is not. It does not exist until you power it on. So we've got this running. That's why this button up here says exit. I can power it on here or power it on here. I'll power it on here, and it'll come up and say warning. This simulator can only operate in the run mode for one day. After one day, the simulator will be switched to program mode automatically. If you have the standard, it's going to come, I think it says 10 minutes. So I'm going to say OK that. Now, um, I don't see the simulator. That's not it right here. It's actually behind this window. If you were to go down into your taskbar, you will see a little image down there. And when you mouse over, it shows you the simulator. I'm going to click on that to bring it back into view. And see, now it's here. It's active. You see the power's on. It's in the run mode. To prove that, I'm going to put it in the program mode. You see, this is like your toggle switch here. Program, remote. Always leave it in the remote mode. Run, remote. Okay, now see when I start up again, I got this message again. Put it back in the remote mode. I can turn on and off any of these inputs by just clicking on them. And you can see that the LEDs here light up accordingly. Now we do have an issue with this simulator. I'm going to power it back off. I'm going to stop it. And now I'm going to bring it up again. But before I power it on, I'm going to look at the IP address. Now this is what shows up on my computer. My uh, network interface controller is on my own Ethernet network here in my lab which is 100, 100, 100. That's the address of my network, not my nodes, but my network, because I have a subnet mask of 255, 255, 255. That designates that the first three octets, 100, 100, 100, that is the address of the network itself, not the node. This is the actual address of my computer, so I'm going to select this as the address for this simulator. Now, I, now I'll go power it on. And I get that warning again. Every time you power it on, you're going to get that warning. Or I should say every time it goes into the run mode, you're going to get that warning. So I have a controller running now. I'm going to go up here and click on disconnect. That'll connect me. Now see, it's going to come up because there's no connection path here. It's going to try for a while and, and it may eventually tighten. There it is. That's what I was looking for. Now I'm trying to keep everything on the screen inside of a 1024 space. That's why things, I have a larger monitor with more resolution and so objects pop up outside. Notice that this is a real LC5048 QBB. That's right here in front of me, but that's not what I'm using. And this is a real LC2020 QBB. That's also right in front of me connected to Ethernet. There's my panel view. There's my PowerFlex drive. And there, folks, is my simulator. We'll spread this out a little bit so you can see. S for simulator. So I'm going to click on that and say OK. Now my path up here is to that simulator. But the simulator is actually in the RAM of my desktop computer. It's not external to the computer. But to Connected Components Workbench, it looks exactly like a 48QWB that's connected out there somewhere on Ethernet. Now there are some limitations, and I'm going to show you one here in a second, something that will cause it to fault regularly. I'm going to download Project to the controller the first time. I'm going to just download. But I'm, then I'm going to show you something else. This right here. This is what I want to show you. If you download, if you download, it's only going to download the programs, not the project values. We, we want to download the project values. And I would advise you, while you're doing this you know, training course, you're using the manuals and doing projects. I would always download with values because if you don't, then what you did offline, if you entered any values as far as configurations, etc., they're not going to get downloaded and you're still going to have online what you had when you left and went offline to make edits. So if you make edits offline and it includes any data, I mean, timer, presets, values, and registers, anything, that won't download unless you pick download with values. Here's our message again. You'll get tired of seeing that. Okay, now we have a program in, well, we don't have a program because I didn't create any, but we have a project downloaded, so we have an empty program. Now, if I open up global variables, if I click on digital input 
I'm going to unpin this. I'm going to pull this completely out of the view and then shrink it down and now I'll put it back in. Okay, see if it'll stay on top. Okay, that's good. I got a feeling it's not going to stay on top, so I'm going to have to put it slightly out of view so I can click on it. This doesn't have a lock on top like you had in RS Logics. So I'm going to go to the simulator now. And remember, it's down on my taskbar. When I click on it, it comes up. Now I'm going to scroll down until I see digital input 0 and 1 there. And I'm going to go back. You see the, tr the challenge here, keeping the stuff on top. I'm going to click on 0, 0. And now you see, look there. Logical value for digital input 0, 0 is checked. I click on 3, then 3 is checked. What you're seeing is that you're online with a controller, a Micro 850. Connected Components Workbench does not know the difference between this simulator and a real hardware Micro 850 out there hanging off of Ethernet. I'm, now I'm going to, because I want to do something other than as far as we've gone, I'm going to close that. I'm going to disconnect by clicking on connect. Now see it says disconnected. Go to programs, add new ladder diagram program, open it up, and I'll put in the true if on. I usually don't type in the tags there, and then I'll add a coil. So we have a basic wrong. I like to do it from here. I'm going to go and type in underscore IO, see, and it comes up, type forward, double click. So that's input zero, and here I'm going to type in underscore IO underscore, oh there it is right there, digital output. It knows then. See this knew that this was an in, needed an input and this needed an output. So it came kind of right there. We'll double click on that. Okay, now we have a rung that says when that input is on, then turn on that output. So let's download it. Remember, you're already supposed to know how to do all this stuff. Let's download it. That always takes a while. Um, I wish it was faster. It's not. Download with project values. We really don't have any, but you want to get in the habit of downloading with project values until you get out on the shop floor and you're doing things on a live process. Then you got to be real careful what you're doing. You may not want to overwrite the values that are actually in the controller right at the moment. Okay, now we're downloaded and connected. Now here's the challenge. I'm going to bring this back up and look, it's already on. So let me turn that puppy off. See, the run goes false. Turn input zero on, the run goes true. And this output down here goes on. Look at that. See how easy this is. Now I'm going to go show you a, a challenge with this particular uh, simulator. And to do that, I'll just uh, stop the simulator so it's not running. Actually, I just decided that it would be better to leave it running. And I'll explain why when I get into where I'm going. I'm going to open the task manager. Uh, Control Alt Delete is one way to do that. Task Manager, and I'm going to collapse this back down because this is what you would see, okay? Now this is uh, Windows 10 Pro. You may have Windows 7, you may even, well, you better have Windows 7 or 10. I don't know about Vista and 8. I spent one day with each of those and took the computer back and I stuck with Windows 7 Pro until I got Windows 10 Pro. I have probably a dozen computers and half of them are 10, half of them are 7. But here's the thing. You open up Task Manager. Now this, you'll never discover this accidentally. But this simulator has a habit of faulting. Because remember, this is running in RAM on your desktop or laptop. It's not a standalone piece of computing out there. So you've got all these other things running in your computer. You could have, uh, you could be on websites, email, uh, all kinds of things running in the background. Let's go to more details. And if you, if you were to do what I want you to do from here, if you right click, you would not see go to details. It's the choice isn't here. But if I pick more details, then I right click here. And by the way, look, this is all CPU usage and stuff. Look, power usage, very high. The That simulator is using a bunch of power. You see, think everything else is low. Now you can see go to details, right? Click on that. Now, you're still not done yet. You're really not to the details. The simulator will come up. I see it's off the screen, so I'm going to have to... It'll come up highlighted. Okay, right click on this and set affinity. What that's going to do is allow you to pick how many cores of your processor are being used for Micro 800 Simulator. Now my understanding of this issue that Rockwell Automation has with running the simulator is that if your processor is too fast, 
you're going to have an issue. Now typically with a watchdog timer, if it's faulting, that means that it got stuck in a, in a single program cycle before it reached the watchdog timer timeout. And by default, for the simulator, the, when you're emulating a controller, it's two seconds. I bumped it out all the way to 60 seconds, and it's still faulted. That's because of all the stuff going on in the background. So I unselect all processors, and then I select two. They recommend four or less. CPUs. I click on OK. Now I'm going to right click on that again. It took. Now I can close that down. Now I'm going to go back out and run this. I still see faults once in a while, but one thing will tell you how well this is working. If you click on, click off, and it goes on and off real quick, bang, 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 like that, then it's working pretty well. So just keep in mind that if your simulator faults, it's not really the watchdog timer, it's an issue with Windows 10 in your RAM and how many cores are being taken up to execute this simulator. Now there's one other thing that I want to show you. We are disconnected. I'm going to have to go online to do it. So we'll go online with the processor, pop the simulator back up there, and we'll go to the Microwave 50. We'll go to Diagnose, Fault, Clear Fault. If your processor faults, not your processor, oh your processor, the simulator faults, go to Microwave 50, Fault Diagnostics, and you can clear the fault by clicking here. What I was doing was re-downloading the whole program to get it back in the unfolded condition. This is a little bit quicker, but you have to be online to do it. So if you're going to work with these manuals, they will be available in early December 2019 from PLCE University at myshopify.com. If you go to Who We Are tab, go down to Contact Us, you can check on availability. Also, if you're a school teacher, trainer, instructor, anyway involved in knowledge transfer, and you want some assistance, please contact us. What I supply is free advice and hands-on lab project manuals. The actual instructor teacher in the live classroom, there's so much more that they can do that I can't do because I'm not there. All that I'm supplying is a set of project manuals to use as you teach your students. My expertise has been PLC 2, 3, didn't do any PLC 4, PLC 5, Slick 100, Slick 150, Slick 500, all the micro logics, all the compact logics, and all the control logics, RS Logix 5000, Studio 5000, RS Logix 5500, MicroStarter. And at some point, I looked at the 800. I didn't like it at first because it was kind of awkward and I was spoiled using RS Logix. Finally, I looked and nobody was really doing much for people that wanted to use the Micro 800. About a year or two ago, I started putting in more and more time to support this product. Right now, all of my new content for the most part is going to be for the Micro 800, PanelView 800, and PowerFlex 525 integration. Have a nice day.